So one more story about the Abraham Torah that really in a lot of ways is, I think, maybe the most remarkable of all. Um, I was officiating at a Shabbat morning benot mitzvah ceremony. Two, I still remember the, the girls and their families, uh, both of the girls deeply involved, families deeply involved, and uh, a lot of people um, kind of jammed into the space that we used to use but back in those days because that's what we had, the sanctuary and the over the old sanctuary and the overflow into the auditorium behind it. Um, we were very fo focused on what was happening and moving along beautifully and got to the Torah service and uh, everybody stood and then the music began and I went to the ark and opened the curtains and there was nothing there. And at first it's, it, the, the thought hits, there's some glitch, there's some, you know, practical, somebody forgot, somebody took it out to watch, to take care of it, to fix it up, uh, make sure that the, the scroll was, was set properly and forgot to put it back. Unlikely, but that's my, that was my first thought. And then started realizing, no, it was gone, and we had no idea where it was, and it was stunning. I had to really work hard to, to just keep my, my wits about me, at which point I asked everybody to sit down, uh, said, we'll take a break, we're going to see if we can figure this out, um, and uh, literally sent people through the building to see if it was somewhere, which it was not, and after just a couple of minutes, I uh, realized we had to go on, on with the show, and that's what we did. And we took out the, the girls' uh, study sheets that had their printed Torah portion there and used that instead and carried the whole service forward. Um, and that afternoon, uh, as we had reported it to the police and the police had come by to talk to us and came by and, and uh, tried to figure out from the office, from me, from somebody, who could have taken it? Who could have had access to it? There was security on the building. Who could have found out uh, how to get in and, and, and take it? Um, I remember sitting at home that afternoon and people came from the congregation coming by. And it was almost like, God forbid, but it felt like a shiva. People were coming by to, to offer condolences with the sense that the Torah was gone. And sometime, I'm going to say that evening, the police followed up a lead. There was a disgruntled uh, ex-employee, a part-time maintenance guy, young man, who had been dismissed and was unhappy about it. And we were sort of naive in those days and didn't realize that's when you change the code to the building. Specifically, that's the perfect moment to change the code, which we had not done. And he decided that the uh, silver on the Taurus we're going to make him a lot of money. So he took the scroll and, and took the, the silver, took the silver off it, figuring that's what would be worth something, that's what he could get money for, and kind of left the Torah out, the scroll itself, left it out in a field of corn and, and knew exactly where he had left it, but didn't care because that wasn't what was valuable. He clearly didn't understand one, that the silver ornamentation was was uh, not not the real deal and was worth all that much, and that the Torah was probably worth, at that time, tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, in any event, they figured out it was him, and they figured out from talking to him that it was uh, left abandoned in this field, and they said, tell us where it is, and he said to them, I will tell you where it is if you and the synagogue agree to drop all charges against me, uh, which is, of course, what we did. Got the Torah back. It was a little bit worse for wear, but we got it worked on and fixed up. Um, got the, the silver ornamentation back again, although it was somewhat damaged. We managed to fix up what had been damaged and, and used it once again as our first and regular Torah. Um, but the feeling of opening that ark and seeing the Torah gone was, you know, if you have those dreams where you are in your pajamas at school or one of those crazy dreams, it was a feeling of almost that the synagogue had been denuded, um, that there was something that should have been there that wasn't, and without it, 
feeling naked before the world. It was one of the sickest feelings I ever had. And getting it back and putting it back in the, in the, in the ark and using it again, uh, you know the old thing about you don't know what you have till you lose it. It was a real feeling of celebration when we got to use the Torah once again.